Hey guys, and welcome to the Movement Online. Thank you so much for tuning in with us. We're so glad that you're here. Tonight, Shane is gonna be starting a new series called Fix It Jesus, where he's gonna be talking about the different miracles that Jesus performed while he was here on earth. Also at 715, we're gonna be hosting Zoom groups where you get to connect with your life group and your life group leaders. To have access to these, make sure you're signed up for either Remind or you're a part of our Facebook group. These are the only two places that we're gonna be posting these links. What's up TV land? This is your boy Dollar Bill and it's time for Craft Time with Dollar Bill. And so today we're gonna to make a really cool project for you guys. I know you guys are stuck at home with the quarantines. And uh, and so uh, so today I'm gonna to use the toilet paper roll. And uh, and so this one still got some meat on the bones. And so some of y'all y'all chicken wings look like that. So you need to peel this off. Go ahead and peel this off. About as clean as it's gonna get. It's not getting cleaner than this. And so the next step that you need to do is you could you need to paint it. Regular paint. I'm gonna use some spray paint because that's how we'll be doing all the time. And so I'm gonna spray paint this black. All right. So after you done painted it, mine's black. Uh, we gotta make get some eyeballs. Some of y'all got the oogly boogly eyes. Dollar Bill don't have that, so Dollar Bill's gotta he's gotta make my own eyes out of leftover paper. Y'all know y'all got some paper laying around, so like paper, Dollar Bill's gonna make some eyes out of the paper. Dollar Bill's gotta make, I gotta make some wings. And so you gotta make some wings. So I got a black sheet of paper. I got I got my black little toilet paper roll. It's painted black, I spray painted that. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to actually going to cut this, make this into half, into twos. I'm going to make, I'm going to make some, some wings for it. So you don't have to use all this paper, like me, I need to use my half, you see what I just cut. Some wings, and then you can either glue, glue this on, oh snap, oh, oh, I thought I heard a bullet flying by or something. And uh, and so you, you can glue it, I don't glue, I got some tape, this is my, my mama's tape that she be wrapping no Christmas presents up tape, and so I'm going to tape the wings to my wrappers, just like that wrap. Bam, my TP. And then once you done, done, done the major eyeballs, you, you tape your wings to it. This is how, oh, one more step. Then you gotta make some antennas, some antennas and so on. So once you put your antennas on it, then it's done. You the major crafts, and so for me, you can make a ladybug. You can make any kind of bug. You can make a dragonfly. You just gotta do the wings like you're supposed to do the wings. But for me, Dollar Bill, we made a roach, and so that's my roaches right there. They got long antennas. Uh, you got the blue eyes. I saw a blue eyed roach one time. I think I have blue eyes like it was at the beach. But yeah, that's my roach. Hope if you want to make some roaches, you can do just like what Dollar did. I see you next time on Crafts with Dollar. Hey everybody, just wanted to tell you, hey, we love you, we're thinking about you. So here it goes, we got two things we want you to do. We want you to tell us, one, how you're taking care of yourself, what you're doing uh, in your pastimes, your, this extra time off you're having, and two, how you're being God's hands and feet with those around you, how you're loving, whether it's people in your house or your neighbors uh, next door or across the street just how you're making uh, your life as a Christ follower applicable in your everyday life now that you've got extra time on your hands. We've been doing a couple of uh, different things. We've been grilling and having a good time there, reading books, watching movies, uh, been able to love on my parents and Lindsay's parents a little bit uh, in the last couple of days. The way we want you to get that information to us is either by Facebook or by Instagram, leaving comments or leaving a comment in the, at the bottom of this video. We want you to pause right now, just, just press pause, and we want you to take a time and just ask God to meet you where you are. Whether it's at the end of a tough day of homeschooling, which is uncomfortable and odd, or um, whether it's uh, stress because we're in week two, three, four, whatever it is now, of uh, altered schedules or whatnot. So take time, press pause on this video, go in, and uh, sit down and just ask God to come and meet you where, where you are right now. Hey guys, I hope you're doing fantastic. I tell you what, we really do miss you, uh, but I hope that you don't miss out on tonight. We've got a great talk coming up by Shane Paget. He's looking forward to talking with you about our new series called Fix It Jesus. 
Go ahead and turn in your Bibles. We're going to be in John chapter 2. We're going to be verse 1 through 11. Uh, the story about Jesus turning water into wine. But here's what's awesome about that. Jesus does something extra special. He turns something that is nothing into something. And the bottom line is this, is that Jesus is an expert at doing that. He's an expert creator, creating something out of nothing. So look forward to uh, all that's going to come your way tonight, and we can't wait to see you soon. Now, get your minds right and get ready, and get ready to dive into God's Word tonight. Talk to you soon. Know this on outset is that we're shooting from my backyard. It is very small and it's not going to be perfect. You're going to hear the wind blowing uh, and uh, you may see my dog. You may hear birds. You may, my neighbor may pop uh, their head over this. Um, I have no idea what to expect, but we're going to we're going to do this anyways. So if you're with me, go ahead and turn to John chapter two. We're going to be in verses one through eleven. There, and Jesus and disciples had also been invited to the wedding. So a couple things we need to know off the bat. Um, is that Jesus always loved parties. And so you see he loves gatherings. Um, I would even say he loves fish fries. And so we see that in scripture when he fed the, the 5,000. But Jesus loves parties. And, um, and so, so he's invited to a wedding. And, uh, and so I don't know about you, but I love parties. Uh, when I was your age, when I was young, I would go to, um, <clears throat> to some good parties, uh, productive parties. I would go in fun parties, clean parties. And then I would go to some buck wild parties. Yeah, that's what we would call it in the 90s, buck wild. And so I, I would do both. And so um, I remember the good parties I'd go to was around people that I genuinely loved, uh, people that I really cared for. And we would eat steak or, or cook out hot dogs and hamburgers. And then uh, we'd watch wrestling. That was a thing in the 90s. Uh, but Jesus gets invited to a wedding. And so if we know anything about weddings, things can go wrong at a wedding. It's easier for me to do uh, a funeral than a wedding and I would I would guess that you haven't unless you're a pastor that you have uh, never done a wedding or a funeral uh, but uh, I, it's easier for me to do a funeral than a wedding because uh, where there's happy moments things can go wrong and people remember happy moments moments that are not very happy people kind of suppress their thoughts and they're all caught up in their feelings and and they're sad and that takes over that overrides anything that's that catastrophic happens because they're already grieving, you know? And so we find Jesus is at a wedding, got invited, him, he and his disciples, and so they all go in and they, they ride they, they, they ride into this wedding. And it says, uh, verse three, when the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. And so this a uh, really quick disclaimer, wine uh, today versus wine in those days was completely different, okay? Uh, we have a filtration system for water um, now that uh, keeps water clean. Uh, <clears throat> to be honest, we don't even know what they throw in there. They're probably throwing a lot of chlorine and bleach in the water to make it clean. But there's places around the world that if they go to get water, um, that they um, that, that they just can't drink the water that's there that's provided for them because it has parasites and it gets dirty and things like that. And so um, hashtag um, water mission, right? And so And so here's the thing, though. Um, the thing is, is that um, that we see that, that the wine has ran out, and so um, so they're having a good time, and this way at this wedding, and the wine runs out. So so Jesus' mom goes to Jesus, and it says, verse four. It says uh, back at verse three, and uh, she goes to Jesus, says, Jesus, the water's uh, the, the wine has ran out, um, and so verse four, dear woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied. My time has not yet yet come. So in other words, Jesus is saying, this is really none of my business. It's really none of our business. Um, it's not time for me to just do my thing. Um, and uh, and so why do you involve me? Is what he says. And then he says, verse five, his mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells, whatever he tells you. So it's like, listen, guys, I know you guys are around here. Just do whatever he tells you to do. Verse six says, nearby stood six stone water jars. The kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. So Jesus said to the servant, he says, he says, fill those with water. So he looks at the guy and says, hey, you see those six jars, those stone jars? Go ahead. Um, and, and they're huge. I and mean, they hold, I mean, think about 20 to 30 gallons. Um, and so he says, fill those up. And so they, and then, so they did. And then they filled it to the brim on verse 7 at the end of that. Then verse 8 says, then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. So he's basically saying, hey guys, grab your pictures, grab your pictures, go ahead and scoop some out and take it to the party, okay? I hear the music playing, uh, things are going down, they, they're, 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 
you know, they're dancing on, on the floor. Uh, they got their iPhones out doing some TikTok stuff. Um, they're having a good time. Go ahead and take some water out. Take some, uh, go ahead and dip your pitcher in those stone jars and go ahead and take it to them. And then it says here, so they did so, which they were instructed to do that. Verse nine, and the master of the banquet, so that the head guy of the banquet, that that the the um, we would call this the wedding coordinator, right? Master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into the wine, and he did not realize where it come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Obviously, the servants was with Jesus. Jesus instructed the servants, didn't instruct the master of the banquet. Uh, but then he called the bridegroom aside. So then he says, the master of the banquet says, "Hey, groom, come over here real quick," and he puts his arm around. He's like, "Listen." He says, everyone brings out the choice wine first and then a cheaper wine after the guests had too much to drink. But you just say the best till now. So basically puts his arm around the guy and he's like, listen, usually people put out the best best wine in the beginning, um, but you have saved. I mean, the guys are having a great time right now. They're partying down, but hey, where'd you, you know, uh, how'd you make this happen? You know, uh, you did this. This is awesome. You know, people remember this waiting forever and ever to have people having a good time. Um, this is astounding. Because people, they bring out the cheaper wine later on in the night. Um, and it says, verse 11, This, the first of his miraculous signs, Jesus performed at Canaan and Galilee, and he thus revealed his glory, and his disciples put their faith in him. And so, so here's the thing. If he ran out of wine, if there was not enough wine at, at the party, people had a, a terrible time, the groom culturally could have been sued. Okay, he could have, they could have pressed charges against him. It could have been catastrophic as far as his, his character and integrity. Um, for if he had a business, it, 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 it had messed up his business. It could have really um, harmed him more than it would have helped him, right? It wouldn't have helped him at all. It would have harmed him. Um, but, but because Jesus stepped in, it, he actually helped him. The people are going to talk about this for weeks, um, probably for months, okay? And so if they, he ran out of wine, whether he didn't prepare right or whether there was too many people at the party, it, it would have been his fault and he would have suffered greatly for it. And, I'd say, and so here's this, the second thing is this, and this is that kind of gets to our point. Um, it says in verse seven at the end of that, it says that he filled it to the brim. Uh, it says that he filled, they filled it to the brim. And so what, what, what happened is they, they filled um, those six jars, the stone jars up to, to, of water to the very top. Okay, so Jesus couldn't have went in and changed it because it was filled to the brim. I don't know if you've ever tried that before. Go ahead and try to make some lemonade. Fill the water all the way to the top and then try to add your sugar and your lemon juice. It, it's not going to work. It's going to overflow out. It's going to spill out, right? And so, so the cool thing about it is they filled it to the brim and then Jesus couldn't, didn't change the water. What he did was he transformed the water. This is what I want us to get is that Jesus is an expert at taking nothing and making something. And so I don't know how that hits your life today and where you're at being in quarantine um, or even going to work every day if you're an adult. Um, but know that, that to be true. I don't know your situation. I don't know how you're feeling at this moment. Um, I don't know uh, what you've gone through in your life. I don't know um, how you've been impacted by this whole pandemic uh, or just in your life and you know, just the history that you've had. Um, be on this earth. But what I do know is that no matter where you're at is that he is an expert at taking nothing and making something. And God has a plan and purpose for your life and know that. My Jesus, um, uh, you are good. Um, you are gracious. Um, you are more than enough. And so God, I just pray that Whoever listens to this message and hears it and is watching, Lord, I pray that you would speak to them. Um, I pray, Holy Spirit of God, that you would just begin to um, convict uh, the hearts that need to be convicted today. Um, people who are leaning on their own understanding, people who are leaning on their own strength, people who um, are doing their own thing. Lord, may you convict them. May you draw them back to yourself. May you take um, their feet that's in mud. Uh, God, may you put it on solid ground. God, I pray for those who just need encouragement today, Lord. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would um, bring peace to the storms that are in their life. Um, I pray that, um, that you would empower them by the Holy Spirit. Um, God, I pray that you bring encouragement their way. 
Uh, I pray, Lord, that they would feel that you are near them, God. And if we have your presence, we have everything that we need. Uh, we don't need anything else. Uh, we just need you, God. And so I just pray that they would feel you um, evermore. And so, God, help us, help me um, to be salt and to be light in, the, in these difficult times. Um, God, I don't know. I don't even know what I'm doing half the time. Um, but I, I do know, God, that, um, that there's people that are far from you. And the people that need you, they need to know that there's a God that cares for them. They need to know that there's a God that's for them, not against them. Uh, they, need to go, they need to know that, um, that you love them. And so help me help us um, together, Lord. Um, be salt and be light and be your people, I pray. And we ask you things in your name. Amen. Thanks for tuning in with us today. Don't forget that at 715, we're going to be hosting our Zoom groups. We hope to see you there.